Oh, everybody. We're going to do mailbagging here with these kids today. Uh, their mom is just across the hall. Oh, can you watch your head there, pal? Yeah, I should watch your head. Uh, so, um, I'll, I'll talk more about that in a minute, but first I want to bring all the stuff in. All the stuff didn't need to include you, Custard. You are pretty stuff, though. What are you thinking, Custard? Scared away by the kittens. All right, mailbag starts in about 10 minutes at uh, 10 o'clock as usual. Uh, I don't anticipate being late um, unless I lose track of time somehow, but uh, I will be back in just a little bit and we'll do mailbag with these kittens, all right? And with all of you, of course. No, it's not quite yet. I, I think you're going to get along real well with everybody, but you're not quite there yet, are you? Let's make your let's make your beanbag chair a place to sit. Come on, honey. Come on, come on up here with me. What do you need?
Come here, sweetie. Come have a chance to get a hug from me. I'm going to go do mailbag. I'll be back. Sit right here. You can have a cushion, but I guess we're okay. Hang on now. All right. Hey, everybody. It is mailbag time, isn't it, cuties? Let's get these cameras and me adjusted a little bit to see, uh, see where we're at. All right. One minute. Yeah, all right, I guess that's good because uh, the kittens are going to be climbing all over me, so we might as well kind of stick it here. And we can switch them around as we like. And how does that look on the stream? Let's find out. Yeah, not bad. All right. So uh, what's going on? Uh, News-wise, okay, so um, what is going on? First off, uh, Trinket. Uh, was picked up by her doctor yesterday and we've seen a couple pictures of her in her new home already and it seems like she's settling in just fine unsurprisingly uh, living at the top of the cat tree just like she liked to do here uh, every time there was a cat tree she was on the top of it so that works out um and you may have noticed that these kittens mom is uh, across the hall in brooks old room uh, or whoever, uh, there have been a number of cats that have used that room, but we still think of it as Brooks for some reason, even though, uh, was it maybe, that, uh, no, Myth that spent so much time over there that I'm thinking of, maybe, so it could be Myth's room. Uh, anyway, uh, she is over there because she has continued to have, like, really bad poops yesterday. Oh, man, she has just been exhausting me, uh, which is, by the way, to interrupt myself, that's the reason why Mailbag's coming in two parts this weekend. I was thinking about just skipping Mailbag entirely today. Um, but instead I thought we would do part of it today, uh, just because we've left part of it from last week and I didn't want to keep doing that. And then we're going to do the rest of it tomorrow. It's a pretty even split, uh, between what we've got for today and tomorrow. So anyway, um, yesterday I came in, uh, in the morning and there was just a giant mess in here. She vomited and pooped and it was bad poop and it was everywhere. And so I cleaned the entire room. Uh, I washed all three rugs in all three of the rooms upstairs. We got this annex, we got the second annex, we got Brooks' room. Uh, I, I washed the floors, the rugs. Uh, you know, we treated everything, uh, made all three rooms real ready. And uh, then the plan for right now is uh, because we've tried so many things with um, with their mom cahoots already to to get her to have good poops, and it's kind of hit or miss. And my current best theory is that. It's really just stress related. I think I think it is sort of um, the stress of having her kittens right here and having the food right here and the other cats that she can see through the door. Um, and all this sort of comes together and you can tell that she's kind of a nervous kind of cat right from the start anyway. Um, so uh, I think that, that all that stuff comes together and causes her to 
just have bad poop, um, you know, like cats can get diarrhea just from being stressed out and the vomiting that always happens in the morning, I think kind of a reaction to there not being any food uh, or whatever. Um, so I think that, that that is the best theory for why she's having digestive issues is uh, just stress. So we're trying to reduce that for her. And one of the things that reduces it, uh, frankly, is is being away from her kittens. She's She's done, I mean, I think some of you have observed her pushing them away uh, and smacking them when they get too close because she's trying to wean them and she wants them to stop nursing, which is valid. Most moms go through this stage right about now where they want to get their kittens to stop nursing and they discipline them a little bit for it. And uh, we, we always get uh, you know comments and emails from people who haven't seen it before, like, oh, she's beating up her kids, but it's a perfectly natural way that it happens. She doesn't cause them any actual harm. Um, but that's how she says, all right, kids, you're, you're done eating from me now. You need to go to the food bowl. Uh, and so she's been doing a lot more of that. Um, and I think that the kids constantly wanting to nurse and being here and she, her feeling like she's got them all contribute to her stress a little bit. Um, she hasn't given the slightest indication that she misses her kids. If you see her kind of hanging around the door and looking like she's lonely and meowing next to her, it's probably not about her kids. It's probably about wanting me or DJ to be company for her. She spent all night in the master bedroom with the both of us and was fine up until six o'clock this morning when it was time for breakfast and there wasn't any food out. And then she started searching the entire room for food and doing her cute little, she's got such a musical meow, her meow to beg for food. Uh, she found the, the can of dry food that I carry around sometimes, that plastic can up on one of the counters, uh, the, the sideboard in the bedroom. And she started batting it around and making a lot of noise and trying to get into it and she couldn't. Uh, so, you know, long story short, she woke me up a little bit early with all this angst about food. But other than that, she had a, a perfect night where she was unstressed. She just slept peacefully the whole time on a DJ's feet. And uh, I think was really enjoying the fact that she didn't have to worry about anything. And to top it all off, again, this is not proof of anything, but she had her first good poop in about three days this morning. Uh, where it was all nice, well-formed, perfect, everything great. So, you know, maybe, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that means anything yet. It's going to take a little further experimentation, uh, to not only to learn whether it's stress that's causing the trouble, but to learn all the things that might stress her out. You know, is she going to be just as stressed in that room next door if we don't spend enough time with her? Uh, or, you know, not, I, I don't know. Um, but... Just to let you know, our plan is not to just leave her in that room and visit her once in a while. Uh, the fact is that we've been introducing her to the faculty and to Ocean. Um, and uh, so far, I, those introductions are going what I would say as well. She's not friends with anybody yet. Uh, if anybody gets too close to her, she starts hissing and growling. Um, and uh, she's gotten some of that back too. Oshi especially will growl or hiss when anybody gets too close to her. Um, but... The fact that that's all it is, is I think a very good sign um, where uh, she can coexist with another cat as long as they don't try to get in her face, she's going to be fine with it. That is exactly the way that adult cat relationships start. It's the way that Ocean was with everybody in the faculty and now mostly not. Uh, she still, uh, I just saw Ocean this morning though, when uh, Custard was first let out of his room, he walked right up to Ocean and she hissed at him and kind of ran away and then when he kept walking, uh, in her direction she started hissing at him more to say stay back but as long as he does stay back uh, you know she's fine with it so that's um that in my opinion is, is a good cat interaction where it's not like maggie where she's gonna hunt them to the ends of the earth uh, and, and make sure that they feel the pain uh, it's just uh i don't want you too close to me you don't want to be too close to me all right, we're fine then, as long as you don't get too close to me. And to make that point, um, she spent uh, a lot of the time, several hours in the master bedroom this morning with Custard, and they were fine because they ignored each other. Uh, Custard sat you know, on one side of the room, she sat on the other side of the room, no conflict. Um, and I think that's how they start. And then over time, they start to realize that this cat doesn't want to start any trouble with me, and then they can open up that friendship. Uh, which is, that's a real nice, natural, easy progression for cats to get together. Uh, and we kind of try to push it along a little bit too. You might've seen this morning, I was feeding her up close to ocean so that they would have that bonding time. Uh, and she hissed and growled a little bit at first because she thought ocean was too close to her food. Uh, but they were 
fine. It was just a little hiss and a growl, and then they stop. Uh, I, I didn't want to stress them out too much. Um, and uh, we're also sort of, you know, pushing that by trying to bring Custard into her zone and to bring the other cats in and to make sure that she at least sees them and has that start of a relationship with them. Uh, but I've got my fingers crossed. I think it's, uh, I think there's a good chance that she will end up being uh, great and, and available to hang out with the faculty um, as long as we, we take it carefully and don't let anybody get too stressed out and, and start trouble. Which, by the way, means she's probably not going to meet Maggie. Uh, Maggie hasn't shown any particular desire to go after her yet, but I think you guys have seen how Maggie gets to be lately. Um, so we'll probably just not even try that one, but we'll see. We'll see. So that's the news. I think that's really just about everything. Um, we've got her in the checking out her brand new room. I just set up before mailbag. Um, I, I'll bring her in here a little bit too. She doesn't have to be entirely separated from her kids, but not for a length of time that's going to cause her stress and probably not when I'm not in the room. Uh, she'll, she'll probably just be able to do supervised visits. Um, I think it's good for them to see her once in a while. I think it's good for her to see them once in a while. But there is another thing, a fact about little kittens that are this age, where now they're six weeks old today. It's a perfect age for them to sort of start to be separated from their mom. And I've seen, uh, historically speaking, that when kittens get separated from their mom after weaning, uh, they usually become a little bit closer uh, companions to their people than uh, cats that go longer with their mom available. Or I should say they, they start that relationship sooner, not that they're better overall, but that um, now these kittens are, are more likely to take that affection for their mom and just pour it into me and DJ and, and get used to having those relationships. Not that these kids have been any slouch as far as that goes uh, anyway. Some classes have more trouble with that than others. These guys have been very people oriented right from the start. A little too people oriented, buddy. You can't just bite my hand like that, okay? No, I, I mean you, actually. I'm talking to you. All right. So uh, that's enough introduction. Now, uh, just to make it real clear, we are going to do mailbag uh, again tomorrow at the, our same time, 10 o'clock uh, in the Kitten Academy time zone, which is Eastern time. But I am given to understand that our daylight savings time change may be happening tonight. So if you're watching from someplace that doesn't practice that same switch over tonight, you may find that uh, it's a different hour for you tomorrow. But that's why we do the times in the uh, K-A-T-Z. It makes it easy for us to understand. And, uh, well, you guys can do the math on that if you have to. Uh, all right. So uh, the mail that we brought in today, uh, we brought a few things that came in today. And we brought a few things that came in last week. So uh, I, we brought in everything that came in last week. So we're going to be caught up on that. And then tomorrow we will go through the rest of the stuff uh, that came in, uh, in the last over the last week. So I hope that makes sense. And, yeah, I, okay, uh, yeah, if I, if I think of anything else, we'll, we'll cover it as we go, but we should just jump right in now. Um, so, uh, we'll start, as always, with the letters. We have a postcard here from the Grand Canyon, not just any old canyon, the, the Grand one. And it says here, Dear Mr. A and DJ, we are from Germany, but right now on a road trip through the southwest of the USA. We're watching Kitten Academy since Belle and her kids, we are... Uh, cat persons, but due to our job, we actually have no cats of our own. Uh, so we love to watch Kitten Academy every day. Thank you for all you do. Please keep going on 24-7 forever. Smiley face. All the best for you, DJ and KA. Thank you. That is so nice. Um, they put the, the postage canceling right over your signature line, though, so I'm not sure the names are. I think one is Alex. But the other name is very hard to read. Uh, it almost looks like it says Melanie. Ah, I think that's what I'm going to go for. Melanie and Alex. I could be wrong on that first one. Um, but uh, thank you guys so much. I can't, you know, um, uh, you're not the first people that have sent us postcards from your vacation. But every time I'm so touched that you think to include us in, in that, that trip that must be so special for you. I've never seen the Grand Canyon myself, but I have been to the Southwest. I spent a few weeks doing some consulting work there once, and um, I will never forget how beautiful it is. It's just amazing. You think of a lot of um, Arizona and New Mexico as desert, and at least, you know, I always have thought of it as sort of desert and, and plain, and uh, it is not, it's, it's 
one of the most colorful, beautiful places I've, I've ever seen in my life. It's, it's one of the few times that I've, I've been like moved to tears just by the landscape. Um, and when it is flowering out there too, the extra color from the flowers is just, it's, it's so beautiful. So yeah, even though I've never seen the Grand Canyon, uh, I know that whole area is incredible and I, I hope you're really enjoying it to the fullest. And thank you again so much for, uh, for thinking of me uh, and DJ on that trip and the kittens, of course. All right, buddy, here, you want to you play with this card a little bit? You can do that. It's better than chewing on me. You are so full of bites. You're so full. Of, you're like a little Tommy. Okay. And we have another one here. It looks like it's postmarked from Norway, perhaps. Oh, it's got some cute pictures in it of some very cute kittens and a letter. Look at this guy. Oh, there's are postcards. There are more postcards. Uh, the Dear Mr. A DJ, the orange rascal on the front reminded me of Spyglass, a.k.a. Blaze, so I had to send it to you. Thank you so much from Norway Cat Fan. Oh, okay. He does look exactly like Spyglass. This is difficult to show you guys, though, because we're getting too much help from little Hoodwink. Hoodwink, what is it? How do you want to play? They all oh, got so much. They're so feisty. And they're so ready to explore. They run out the door every time I open the door, uh, which reminds me, I have plans to get them moved downstairs, which I will try to remember to tell you about. All right. We also have a postcard here of Norway. Um, oh, wow. Look at that. Uh, it says, this is to show you how lucky I am to have beautiful nature an hour's drive from here and right outside my door. I live 10 minutes from the ocean. I wish I could adopt her. <laughs> I see what you did there. Hugs and furs, Norway cat man. This is beautiful. And I've never seen uh, this picture in the top corner. I mean, there's, these are all fantastic. But these two top pictures of the, um, the beautiful crinkly bits, as uh, uh, was said by uh, beautiful crinkly bits. Uh, he won an award for them. Uh, uh, Slarty Bart Fest from uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, uh, supposedly designed the little crinkly bits um, in uh, Norway. And uh, I don't think I've ever seen it like this, though. It it's really does look beautiful. I can see why he won the award for that design. Good job on that. It's a shame it was all destroyed. Um, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's all a reference to a, a book that uh, you either get it or you don't. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Nothing to panic about. Um, all right. So here's your note. It says, Dear Mr. A and DJ, thank you for all you do for mom, cats, kittens, and faculty. I think all the cats have unique personalities and they're all wonderful. I've come to love, love them all. I recently watched an old close-up from when Sweet Brooke was at KA. That's funny because she just came up as Brooke's room. Uh, this was when it was thought she had diabetes. That's right. You showed on camera what she did to give her insulin injections. You're so talented and awesome to share those things. KA is not only to teach kittens to become cats, but where human servants can learn all sorts of ways to handle cats and kittens. Even if you say you're not an expert vet or otherwise, you share knowledge you have. Yeah, I think it's a, I'm going to take a break to, to note. I think it's important to note, though, that I really am not an expert. And there's been so many times that I've shared the way I do things. And then I look back on it later and I think, oh, man, you know, I, I regret sharing that because it's either not the way I do it now or I did a bad job of explaining it. And I would hate anybody to sort of try to follow uh, and, and, you know, have a suboptimal experience because of that. So just take all of it with a grain of salt. Uh, don't look to me to be the, the ultimate expert on anything and you won't go wrong. Uh, you say, I'm not allowed to have any pet. My landlady said no. And health and economic situation did not permit either now. I borrow my friend's cats when visiting them. I also find so much peace and help with my stress and pain by watching KA. I love your interaction with the cats, fosters, and faculty. The possibility to chat with you on Discord is so nice. Also, the wonderful, crazy in a good way, people on Discord make life easier. I agree with you there. It's all a great community. And we love having you there. I love puns. I grew up in a family where puns and bad jokes, dad jokes, were a common thing. So KA is the perfect place in that regard. It's also strangely calming to see you do housework. <laughs> Thank you. I think uh, I love Ocean and her kittens, Cahoots and her tinies, and of course, all faculty, even Grumpy Maggie, Pea Berry, and Rude Custard. Thank you again for all you do. Hugs and thanks from Norway Cat Fan, Heidi B. Thank you, Norway Cat Fan. You do live in what looks like paradise. It just looks like a lovely place, and I'm so glad that you get to enjoy that. We're not much more than 10 minutes from the ocean here. 
And I honestly, uh, I've been to see the ocean then at the beach once uh, in the, uh, we're in our third, third, we're in our fourth year living here now. This is our fourth year. Oh my goodness. And in all that time, I've been to see the ocean once. Although uh, I make regular trips on uh, 95, and if you kind of are driving down the road and you look to the side, you can you can see it in places. So you know that's that's about it. Really, it's sad. Uh, I keep meaning to find time to do that because it's also lovely. Um, but uh, just haven't found the time. Plus, of course, the last few years everything's been kind of up in the air for everybody. Um, but wow, if if you see anything like that postcard on a regular basis, that is spectacular. Uh, just wonderful. Wow. Uh, okay, Hoodwink, hi, you're not usually the one that's going to play with me and bite me. <laughs> this must be the result of your mom being gone all night, just like I was talking about. I don't know if that's good or bad, though. All right, that's the letters that we had to get through. And let's start with uh, the uh, Johnson's package here. Ruth, uh, who is a uh, ports adopter. Uh, sorry, I don't normally use uh, last names, but I think I think she's, she's used to it. Uh, that's my excuse anyway. I'm going to go with that. Uh, Ruth and Bob, anyway. Um, and <clears throat> let's see, does this say box one of two? It certainly does. So let's dive right in. This is from last week. What is going on, pal? Oh, you look very concerned about this. All right. I might want to adjust that camera too, because now they're playing over there. And besides that, she's here and nobody's in the basket. Let me check that real quick. I'm just going to do this. That's not much of an adjustment. Let's do this too. There we go. Just like that. They may be a little tiny, but at least you can see them. Ooh. A very nice blanket here on top. And the note. So let's start with that. Aw, and we have a Cahoots blanket. It's so pretty. All right, we'll get to that. First, let's start with the note. If I can. Oh, there we go. I'm trying. Good, good, good. Just a note. And it's got cute little birdies on it with the bird houses. And it says, hello, DJ and Mr. A. Sorry, hello, Dr. DJ and Mr. A. You know, I started saying Dr. DJ and sort of emphasizing it because at first it was so it was so weird to say Dr. DJ. Like, it's just the word doctor. And now I don't know if everybody understands that when I say that, it's, it's still kind of a joke. Like, she she would never insist that anybody calls her doctor. And I think she still finds it to be somewhat of a novel experience. Uh, but but I've been doing it for so long now. I don't. I think there's a lot of people that may not realize that I'm doing it tongue in cheek. You know. Um, anyway, I mean she's a real doctor, but whatever. We're not formal like that here. So it's been great seeing Cahoots caring for and raising her kittens, where she is able to relax and be loved. There are several items just for Cahoots and other items labeled for other kitties or Kitten Academy. If not labeled, use as you see best. Thank you, helping all these precious kitties and allowing us to watch all the fun seeing them grow and play. We appreciate you both. Bunches from Bob and Ruth. Bob and Ruth, thank you so much. We appreciate you bunches and everything that you have done uh, over all the time uh, for us and for kittens uh, everywhere, uh, not just here at the Kitten Academy. Uh, I know that you've made very generous donations to, to many other places as well. So, uh, first off, we have a very soft blue blanket. It's like a short nap marshmallow blanket almost, uh, which is cute. And I know kittens are going to love that. We have this really pretty tunnel with uh, little smiling daisies on it. Little smiling daisies tunnel. That'll be perfect for some kittens that need it. Oh, and it says Hoodwink. Hoodwink, I'm certain, will love that kind of a thing. I don't think this one has a name on it, so that one could be for anybody. This is that Cahoots blanket that I saw right away that's so cute. Look, it's embroidered with their name, and it's so soft. And she does appreciate soft things more than most mom cats. Like I said, um, um, I was saying on Discord, most mom cats don't really spend the night on the bed, or if they do, it takes them a long time to kind of come around to it. Um, but uh, Cahoots was up there on the bed all night long, uh, not up on our faces, but uh, slept at DJ's feet on the bed. Uh, when I say, like I said, I mean, I know I said that on Discord. I don't know if I've said that uh, during jail back yet. Uh, so I know she likes soft things that way. Also, she climbed up in the basket here that's got a big soft pillow in it and was using that as her home base for a while. So uh, she's going to love having a big soft blanket that's got her name on it, too, which is so cute. Now, this is very cute because it's for Cahoots. 
and they're these weird little rolly chewy things. Do they? Oh, sorry. I was going to see if they had little shakers or anything in them, but no. It's, oh, I see. They're wine corks. I couldn't tell that because they've got this like woven basket around them, but it is. It's a little cork, perfect for chewing on. That's a great chew toy, and uh, they're called bambolios. Apparently, Ban like little bambo bambolio bambusio. Well, anyway, uh, that's great. We have sushi for Logan. We have sushi for Bamboozle. Oh, wow. That's a lot of sushi there. We got, um, oh, this is that uh, that flying. Oh, it says Foxy Flyer for Custard. Oh, he's going to love this. I'm going to love playing with it because I don't think I've had a chance to really play with one of these yet. It's got this rubber tab on it that you can pull, and then you shoot it off like a, like a slingshot. He's right there at the door looking at me. Custard, what do you think of this, buddy? Can anybody see you? Is the door on the camera? He's staring right here. He could come in here right now. That's another bit bonus to not having mom in. Yeah, you can see him in the corner there looking at us. Do you want me to let you in, buddy? Are you going to be cool? Let's find out. Uh, for Flim Flim Flam, by the way, we have the House Panther Taffy Rolls. They do look like little taffy rolls. Justin, what are you looking at, buddy? You want to come in? Let's find out. You're allowed. Come on. Or no, that's fine, too. I think he, he wants to come in, but he's very nervous about these kids. Or maybe nervous about getting attacked by a mom cat. This happens from time to time. Let's see how he's going to be. I think he's going to be fine with kids, though. Yeah, there you go, buddy. They're like, what is this? Oh, my goodness. That's uh, that's um, him. That's uh, that's uh, hogwash. What is that? What is it? What does it mean? Hi, Custer. You want to sit with me down? Come here. Come here. Sit with me. Sit right here, big guy. Okay, let's see. Hi. Let's see. Hi. Oh, do you want to meet him, Hogwash? You want to meet little Custard? Is that a yes? Okay. Well, you still look a little nervous about it. That's all right. You'll get, you'll cover it up. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Uh, oh, this is for you, Hogwash. What do you think of those? Are you going to like those? I don't know. i got something else on my mind right now. He's a little crabby. You see the, the you can see him arching up a little bit, trying to poop up. I don't care how big you try to look. You're not going to look bigger than Custard. All right. He's going to sniff around. He's going to check things out. But I think he's going to be good to the kids, so that's all right. Uh, here we have for Mayhem, we have a, an athletic set, including a Fitbit and a tennis racket. Uh, which makes good sense considering how active Mayhem is. It's such an explorer, too. Of course, I say that she's asleep right now in the, in the basket here. But, uh, they, they've been playing all morning. They've wore themselves out. Here we have little cardboard. Um, they're little cardboard balls that are woven around what looks like silver vine. Is it silver vine, though? It says apple rounds. Uh, playful chews for rabbits, guinea pigs. Yeah, okay, it's not silver vine. It said it looks like silver vine, but I didn't think it was for some reason. It must be apple wood, actually. Why else would they call them apple rounds? Does it say? It says pet safe materials. I can hear their mom meowing next to it. It says untreated wood. <clears throat> well, I guess that's all we know about it. That's very interesting. They're too young to appreciate silver vine anyway, but they would appreciate chewing on a stick. We, there's been lots of times where I've brought in sticks from outside for kittens to play with, and it sounds dumb, but sometimes they really enjoy that. So it could be perfect. Now, this is amazing. Wow, I didn't see this. It is a pineapple kitty. It says meowgical. Meowgical? Uh, that's a bit of a stretch, but we'll go for it. Meowgical pineapple kitty. It's a black cat wearing a pineapple on his head. Oh, my goodness. i got to see if this upper camera is going. <clears throat> Custard, you don't have to use that little now. Is this still on the stream, though? Let me check. So it is. Let's see if I can hold him where you guys can see him a little better. Look at that. He's got a pineapple on his head, and he's got the silliest eyes and the cutest little uh, body and the tail and a curl. He is completely, oh, and he's got little paws. Oh, he's adorable, and it says for K.A. Oh, man, that's so great. I know it goes with the pineapple theme, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to put him in a kitten room because he's got to go someplace special. He's just too cute. I just love this little face. Oh, my goodness. He's completely adorable. All right, uh, for Ari, we've got these little mice, like the ones that he enjoys throwing around the kitchen once in a while. Oh, Custer's done his exploring, and he's ready to go. You want me to let you out, bud? All right, he's going to keep looking. That's fine. 
All right, we'll let him keep going for a minute. We got this weird wand. I have not seen a wand like this. It looks like one of those uh, one of those crazy straws, but it's a wand and it's got fall leaves on it with little faces and a feather. And it feels like a sturdy wand. And I guess uh, making it all curved like that means it, it bends a little bit nicer. So that's cool. It could work out pretty well. That'll be fun to play with. Hmm. I like it. I like the colors too. And it's got a nice grip on it. That's a, that's a fun little wand. And it does say for KA. Speaking of, we have another yarn flag that says, Home Sweet Home with a kitty on it. That is so cute. And that's a very smug looking cat. <clears throat> Excuse me, wearing a, uh, a bandana around his neck. Uh, very cute. Plus, one last thing that says, uh, oh, not one last thing. There's two last things that say bamboozle and mayhem. And they look like big baskets, big soft uh, quilted baskets that will be perfect for them to uh, put all their toys in, maybe some of their endowments. So this one says, the blue one says it's for mayhem, and the gray one says for bamboozle. And they're very attractive. They've got side pockets and a big uh, inner pocket. Uh, those are big baskets. Those are going to be great. Custard's still sniffing around the room. So I'm going to see if I can pick out all the stuff that goes to these kids and put it back in the box. And that way uh, we started to collect the endowments uh, in today's mailbag in one place. So let's see about that here. Uh, let's see. Flim Flam Bamboozle, but Logan is not. Okay. That can go over here. Ari over here. Mayhem Hogwash. Yes, those can go in here. Hi, you're eating my foot. <clears throat> Excuse me, K.A., Hoodwink, and, oh, Custard, you, hey, buddy. Custard, if I if I fling this thing, will you get it right? Ow, ow, ow. Okay, that's too much. That's too much. I'm going to have to hiss at you if you keep that up. Custard, what do you think, buddy? What do you think? Look, it's kind of like one of your one of your rings that you like. Here, you want to try this? Custard, buddy. Oh, <laughs> I didn't shoot it quite right, but that's fine. He's still going to go stick it, even though it's landed on the kitten. And uh, who is that? Uh, Flim Flam? Thing. She's just looking at me like, why did you do this? All right, I'll make sure that leaves the room with us. Uh, thank you so much for that. And we've got another box here, box two of two, that we can go right into. Hang on. I think it's just below this one. This room's going to get pretty crowded by the time we're done. But uh, let's just uh, let's see how we do here. Hi, what is that, Bam? What are you doing over there? You're chewing on the uh, the packing peanuts. I mean, the bubble wrap. Right you? That's fun. Okay, let's see what's over here and labeled. Oh, we got more stuff for the kids. Okay, ooh, I see some fun stuff in here. Just some pirate and stuff. Here we have a really soft blanket for hogwash with the little paw prints on it. We have another similar one that is got uh, is got hearts on it. Yep, that's right. I can English good. Uh, this one's for Flim Clam with little hearts on it. It feels very soft. It's all vacuum packed in there, which is nice. I bought a vacuum bag, by the way, uh, to put the mattress from the other room in. I took, I don't know if you guys have seen the room yet. I cleared that room out completely. I took the bed out of it so there would be more space in it. And I don't think I mentioned, uh, Dawes has been hitting us up for taking a new mom cat in. They've had a few options, and I've said yes to each of them. Um, but so far, uh, it, it, they, they haven't worked out yet. Uh, I think the, the first one turned out to either have delivered babies or not been pregnant. Uh, and they just gave us two more last night where they're like, would you want to take one of these? And I'm like, yes, we'll take anybody. So, um, uh, especially the, the one of them, I said, if we pick, uh, I'll take that one, <laughs> but it doesn't always work that way. Um, anyway, the point being though, I've made that room, I'm making that room ready for a new mom cat to come in any day now. Uh, I don't know exactly how soon they would arrive. Um, but we're ready when they are. Uh, and uh, I did not I did mention I had a plan to move these kids downstairs, and that plan is uh, what I'd like to do if I'm not constantly putting out fires, um, which is putting out fires means dealing with emergencies, and I guess in this case is covering for having to say if I'm not constantly covered in poop. Um, uh, my, I've got a plan to build another climbing wall downstairs, which I'd like to do before we move these kids down, but I did already start cleaning out that room downstairs. You probably noticed it's looking a little bare, and all that is in preparation for these kids to take it over. Um, so all that is, uh, is part of getting them down. We'll do that soon, soon enough. Uh, they're, I, they're not big enough to need to get out of this room yet, um, but they are bold enough that if I move them downstairs today, they would be okay with it. So, uh, yeah, it's in the works anyway. 
Here we have some lovely, uh, oh, receiving blankets that are pumpkin themed. Well, they're not entirely pumpkin themed. This one's got a pumpkin theme, but there's also some leopard print in here and some roses. So weird assortment. Now I can see the pumpkins tied together with the roses because there's roses on the pumpkins. But the leopard print seems way out of place here, uh, which is cool. I like that, that it's kind of uh, random like that. It's, uh, it's interesting. I don't know. I always wish I could talk to the people who put these things together and kind of ask them like, so what were you thinking exactly with the leopard print and the uh, pumpkins together? Anyway, it says for use of KA, which is good because we do use quite a bit of that at KA. Here we have some beautiful socks with kittens on them for Dr. DJ. Uh, and uh, I know that she does wear fun socks to work almost every day. Hers typically match, unlike mine. She takes the time to make them match. Um, but I know people have noticed, too. She says people have commented on her, on her crazy socks uh, and that that's caused her to talk to, about uh, KA with some of the people that she works with. So that's fun. She'll, she'll appreciate those. Here we have a, another soft, oh look at that, it's like Sherpa on one side, soft blanket for Hoodway. Go put it over here. And uh, we have a soft blanket for Cahoots that is real fancy. Um, it's not quite Sherpa, it's like a, well, it's like a heavy, I put it somewhere between Terry Cloth and uh, Sherpa. Uh, Terpa, yeah, okay. No, Sherry Cloth, that sounds weird. Terpa. Uh, whatever. Anyway, this one's for Cahoots, and it's got these cute little hand-drawn kitties, and some of them with rainbow colors, and some of them with butterflies, and uh, oh, snowflakes, too, so it's a very wintry blanket, and I bet it'll keep her very warm. It's so sweet of you to send. Here we have uh, some fish that's a catnip inside, and they're very crinkly fish, and they are, are they labeled? This one does not appear to be labeled, uh, nor does this one, so... That's going to be a fun fish for somebody. It's very pink and shiny, too. The scales are all iridescent. That's cool. What is this? Okay, first off, a Yao catnip pineapple. That's great. Oh, and it says for Maggie. That's so sweet of you to send one for Maggie. She does appreciate the catnip uh, quite a bit, actually. I know she'll appreciate this. Uh, we got out some Yao catnip Christmas trees the other day. She was really digging that. In fact, you'll see them kicking around for a while now. So that's so nice of you to send that for Maggie. Now, I have not yet seen a peeled Yao catnip banana. This says for Professor Eddie, and I bet he'll like it, but who knew that they made these bananas peeled? That, that must be a new thing, right? Is this the, the, is this the very first time they started offering this design? Um, I certainly have never seen it before, and that's pretty cool for Eddie. Banana peeled, it says. Oh. I wonder if the cats will like that more or less in general. You know, the old banana shape is just, it's simple and basic and easy for them, but this has got all these extra flaps on it and they might like that. It's, oh, the flaps have crinkle in them too. So they crinkle and make a little extra sound. That could be good. Hmm. Very interesting. I'm sure Eddie will love it. And then finally, a pirate blanket. Oh, not quite finally. I said finally, but there's one more thing after this. But anyway, we have a, oh, I was going to say a pirate blanket, but it's not a pirate blanket. And you've seen this blanket. Uh, this is the Halloween blanket. It's got a pirate and a witch. And it's got a mummy, and it's got a, uh, the skeleton cat, the, and uh, they're all cats dressed up for Halloween. It's really pretty. Uh, and I think this is the one that we had out. Uh, I just cleaned up all the Halloween blankets. We had this an identical one, though, that was somewhere. I lost track of which one was where. Um, we had three or four Halloween blankets out. Um, it's a really nice. It's big. It's a full-size throw. It's a giant, and it's soft, and it's wonderful. And now we have a spare. Uh, so I like that. Or maybe DJ would put, ow! Ooh, oh man, you really got me there, pal. That's too much bitey on my foot. Yes, that's too much. Okay, good. I see you learned your lesson very well. Okay. Um, yeah, it's great to have a spare. And also, I guess that means maybe not a spare. Maybe DJ can use two of them in the same uh, room to sort of decorate. And we can use this box now to start putting all of uh, stuff that's sent for us or for the academy into, which is nice. Uh, we also have a floppy, electronic flopping fish for flim flam. Uh, flopping fish for flim flam. Wow, that's some nice alliteration right there. Uh, you guys have seen these before. They're the fish that got a little uh, USB chargeable mechanism in them. And if they get disturbed by a cat, they start flopping their tail around and bouncing all over. We have some cats that love them. We have other cats that don't really care one way or the other. Or uh, some that at first at least find them to be extremely scary. Uh, it'll be fun. Um, we, we can save this one for uh, Flim Flams and Downwards, but it's certain that at some point before they graduate, we'll get out one of the ones that we have for the, and uh, let them get used to the idea of it. So 
Thank you for sending the floppy fish for flim clam. Wow, that's fun to say. Uh, and uh, I'm going to take this stuff and sort of pack it up in your bag real quick so that I have an easy way to get these things out of here and also stay organized as we open the rest of the mailbag. Okay, at least a little bit organized. I, should. I love that little cat with the pineapple on his head. He's so cute. All right. There we go. All that in there. Thank you again. It's so nice of you to take care of our kittens like that, too. The faculty, uh, certainly not retired, but we appreciate it. I know they do. Okay, this just says Kitten Academy, so hopefully there's a note on the inside. Let's find out. What are you doing, buddy? You could have made it. Try again. You could have made that jump. Oh, you gave up way too easily. All right. Well, this looks like a Merry Christmas bag. Oh, and there is a note. The note says, enjoy your gift. Merry Christmas to cats and kittens from Jody Lynn and my three cats and two kittens. Oh, well, thank you, Jody Lynn, and to your three cats and two kittens. Uh, that's a lot of cats and kittens. Who am I to point fingers? We've got that many as well. Uh, same number, I guess. Uh, let's see, what is this thing, though? It says Christmas cat toy. Well, that's not too specific. I guess we'll have to open it up to find out. It feels like a pop-up tent to me. Oh, oh, let's find out. That's a cute Christmas bag, isn't it? Oh, it's really packed in there, though. I don't know if I'll be able to get it back in. Oh, it's a Christmas cat tunnel. It's got It's green with candy canes as the design. Is it a tunnel? Because there's a little weird thing on the side there. I guess it is a tunnel with a with a side uh, with a hole in this. It could be a. All right, we're gonna find out. Christmas cat toy is so non-specific. We're just gonna have to check it out and see. You know, DJ's ready for Christmas. She would, she's already got two of her several Christmas trees up. Um, oh, okay, yeah, it's a little tunnel. That's cute. And I don't know what I was seeing that looked like it was a hole because it's just a solid tiny tunnel. And also a Christmas stocking full of Christmas colored cat toys, greens and reds, and one that looks like, uh, I don't know, uh, a little bit more extra colorful. It's got some yellow in there. Uh, very pretty. And I know the kittens are going to enjoy playing with all this stuff. Now to see, can I collapse this and put it away until DJ's ready to tell me where it goes? So, yeah, we're definitely starting the Christmas decor here. I know we started a little early, but we don't usually decorate for Thanksgiving. And uh, DJ is such a fan of Christmas. In fact, Hallmark uh, Christmas movies must have already started because she's already watching the Hallmark Christmas movies in there. And uh, that's, that's fun. It's fun for me, although uh, it gets old pretty quick, if I'm honest. Uh, there's a couple of them, though, that I can watch over and over again. Uh, like the uh, Nine Lives of Christmas, uh, the little Ambrose. Uh, so, so cute. Uh, I do think that's still her favorite one. Oh, let's put these together. So uh, thank you again uh, to, was it uh, Jamie Lynn? Uh oh, I lost the note, didn't I? And your five cats. Here, let's put that in here. Oh, I, I completely lost the note. I don't know where I put it. I filed it. I already filed it away under, um, under, wherever we file all that stuff now. Okay. Uh, well, thank you anyway. Um, I'm going to go with Jamie Lynn. I hope I got the name right. I'm really, I'm really bad at names, especially. Uh, okay. Yes, Meow, you said so. All right, let me take this. Let me take this away from you. You don't need this. Nobody needs this. Custard's like, I'm done in here. May I please, may I please be excused from the classroom? Yeah, buddy, you may. Hang on. Hang on, Justin. We got you. Take this owl to the bedroom, though. If I, if I fling it to the bedroom, will you chase it? Look at you. That's a very silly thing to do. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, you don't have to ask. I heard you the first time. Here, Justin. Yeah, I see. It works better the other way. You put the little rubber part on your tongue and then pull back on the fox. It shot all the way to the bedroom and you ran off after it. Well, I say ran. It was more of a trot, really. That's fine. What are you going to do? 
Uh, good. Okay, we got uh, three more packages here. It's the perfect time for mailbag. I think. We, oh, four more. Uh, one fell back here. Uh, let me just check on chat real quick to make sure. We're... Nobody eats a bean now. Don't bite the bean. No, no. Somebody's not gonna appreciate that when you bite that hard. You gotta, you gotta take it easy. Ah! Here, let's redirect you. Play with this instead. This is, this is acceptable. You bite this thing all you want. There you go. Wrestle with that. Have something else. All right. Does it does? I don't see anybody on chat complaining about anything, so we must be okay. Oh, I do see. Maybe we should turn off the sound in Cahoots' room because she's so loud in there. Uh, but that came a while ago. She's probably going to start talking again though. Now that she heard me in the hallway, so we will. Uh, let's turn. Oh, somebody already got it. Okay, good. I guess the admins were paying attention. Good job. Okay, uh, let's see here. Kitten Academy, it's addressed to Kitten Academy, Muse, and Humans. All right, so everybody, let's see what that's all about. It says, Handle with Cheer. Oh, we got some holiday packaging from Amazon. Oh, these are so cute. Let's see what it says. It's catnip gnomes. Look at these little gnomes. It's a whole variety of gnomes, too. One of them's turned around backwards. Let's turn them all the right way. They're little Christmas gnomes. You can tell they're Christmas gnomes because they're all wearing holiday colors. Whoops. Uh, and, and uh, yeah, they look, they look very hot. And this one's got um, snowflakes on his little hat. I never know how Amazon will pack and ship. So the little gnomes are for the Kahooligans for deployments. They can kick the stuffing out of them from Halfers. Half, Halfers? Halfers? Halfers. Halfers wants you to pet Ari. From Halfers wants you to pet Ari. Oh, is that one name? Halfers wants you to pet Ari? Okay. Well, it's meaningless then. It's just a name. It doesn't mean anything, right? That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. These gnomes are so cute, and it is Christmas, and we're just going to put them out right now. See if you kids want to kick them around, because you said it's for deployment for these kids. Uh, oh, they're very, very silly. Are you falling asleep in my shoe? I hope you're falling asleep in there, because otherwise that far-off look might mean you're peeing in my shoe, and that wouldn't be great, would it? Yeah, they're each different, too. Oh, this one looks like a girl gnome. You can tell by the pink hat, I guess. Buddy, this is, you're just sitting in my shoe. I know, you're just sitting in my shoe. I guess that's okay. That's flim flam, flim flam. I guess it's okay. If you want to bite something that smells like my feet, that's the way to do it. You go for it. Okay. Thank you so much, Halpers wants you to pet Ari. Uh, I appreciate that. And uh, I love the little gnomes, too. I'm, you know, I've never been a fan of, like, collecting gnomes. Let's not, let's not start a gnome collection here. But I did mention um, that uh, we had that coffee table book about gnomes when I was a kid, and I really enjoyed reading it um, and the sort of uh, history of gnomes. My favorite part, of course, was seeing the diagrams of their very complicated little houses that they supposedly build with uh, trap doors, and uh, they have in indoor, uh, well, not plumbing, but uh, they have an indoor outhouse, all that kind of stuff. And it was just really, really cool for me to imagine all that. Uh, and then the scooters actually found that same coffee table book and gave it to me last year. And it's on our coffee table, which is amazing. Like a little thing from my childhood that just came back around. So, so these are super cute. I, I do have a fondness for them. Uh, anyway. All right. This says uh, cat mail. That's cute on the back. And it is addressed. Oh, I see. Uh, just addressed to us uh, from, um, Michelle, who is Mishi60 on Discord. I hope I have that right. I can never remember names, like I said. Not that we don't know who you are, though. Ah, oh, from Mishi60 on Discord. Yeah, I got it right. Look at that. It's got a cute little bow on it from Mishi60 on Discord. All right, let's see. Is there anything else to it? It says it's from sirpepper.etsy.com, which is a uh, it's spelled S-E-R and then P-E-P-P-U-R-R-R. R-R-R. -R -R. R -R -R. Oh, handmade with love for Maggie Moo. Oh, well, she does need a little something to distract her these days, doesn't she? I was telling DJ we need to make more of an effort to play with her so that she's not so full of energy. Uh, we got to wear her out so that she doesn't spend so much time attacking the door. Well, I want to see what this is and show everybody. It's really wrapped up in here, though. I guess I'll have to untie the bow. Maybe we can tie it back on so we don't forget who this is for. Maybe if we need to get it off in the first place. How is that attached? All right, there we go. That's me. Confused by things like knots. 
What is this? Ooh, what on earth? Minty green. I love that sort of sea foam uh, green color. And it looks like it's a, ooh, a, a wand with, it reminds me of like a jellyfish, like a man of war uh, jellyfish right now. But I think, oh, there we go. Now, as it unwraps. I don't know. It still reminds me of that a little bit, doesn't it? Maybe not a man of war, though, like the other kind. I don't know. It does. I don't know if it's just the green or the way these, these things are sort of like uh, those hangy tentacly things. Uh, or these things. Look at that. What a cool wand. And I bet uh, that's going to get a little static electricity on it, and all those things are going to stand apart from each other. Also, it came with a bonus set of little silver vine sticks. It's so pretty. It's pretty well made, too. Uh, I don't know how they attached this at the top, but then they covered the attachment with a little bit of ribbon that matches the theme. So they really put some work into it. Ah, and it's got her name on it. Look at that. Sir Pepper Heart Maggie Moo. That's adorable. Well, Mishi60, thank you for thinking of Maggie. Uh, she definitely, like I said, uh, she needs a little more stimulation in her life. And if she's not going to get it from us, she's going to take it out on anybody she can find. So, uh, so this is good. Uh, thank you so much for that. I'll make an effort to, to play with her extra with it. I'm not going to I'm not gonna be able to put it back in here, but I am going to be able to put it right back in here for the moment. And it can go out with all that stuff. Uh, Mishi60, that's so nice of you. Uh, it's very thoughtful, and I know Maggie's going to appreciate it. And I don't even have to put the tag back on it. It says Sir Pepper, but made with love for Maggie Moo, because it says Maggie Moo on it forever. We'll always know whose it was. How cool is that? I don't have to ask you. That's a rhetorical question. You don't have to answer that. Okay. A couple more. Oh, well, this is Jolly Tom Popcorn. We know what this is. In fact, I'm not even going to open it yet. Uh, this is, uh, if you go to the Jolly Time Popcorn website, they let you sign up for a mailing list thing, and it will uh, they'll send you a, a really nice, frankly, big purple uh, cloth bag that's great for carrying stuff around. It's got their logo on it. And uh, you've seen them before on Mailbag, and they're great for us to say include endowments in. I've used them for so many things now around here. Uh, they're just, they're just always one around, which is good. Again, they're very nice as far as, like, like um, branded you know freebie bags go uh they last and last and they've even got side pockets on them and they're bigger than the rest and they've got um you know you see some bags that are just two pieces of fabric sewn together and that's all right that's a, that's a bag but these ones have the square bottom too so they can get like the size of a grocery bag they can they can expand out wide and carry a lot of extra stuff in them it's great so they're, they're good bags this is fantastic uh, I think this will probably end up in the random endowment pile to be used uh, during endowment time, but uh, whether it does or not, that's very useful. I thank you for that. I'm going to zoom the camera in on these guys who are now starting to all settle in with their new gnome friend. Uh, I say all, that's, you know, three out of five, not bad. If I can find that camera. And look at those little faces. Well, little face, I guess. If one can really see the hoodwink there. Looking right at the camera. And you're just climbing around behind me, trying to get my attention, huh? All right. Well, we're doing well here. Uh, now we got a couple more things. I'm going to take this light one before we take the big one. And uh, the light one, I think, is also from Mishi60. So let's see what that's all about. Another Mishi60. Maybe if I say it enough, I'll remember it. I mean, remember it more clearly, confidently. Let's see. Okay. Is there a note in the bag? No, but look at this. It, is a, it says, per pack. It is a, an Etsy store again. Peace, love, cats, gifts, I guess. I don't know what their address is. We'll figure it out. But it is addressed to Cahoots and her tiny co-conspirators. Uh, I assume there's an S, conspirators. Uh, Cahoots and her tiny co-conspirators. That's cute. From Michelle J. Mishi60 on Discord, I think. <laughs> oh, that's a little bit too self-referential, isn't it? Ooh, and there's a dried up ladybug in here too. Uh, who expected that kind of a bonus? I'm just going just gonna to shake that out into this box here so it doesn't end up on the floor and get eaten and then make these cats uh, vomit it up. 
Uh, those things are everywhere right now, aren't they? And we even had some here, despite the fact our weather's been so weird. Uh, it says that they are Peace Love Cats Gifts on their Etsy store. They're Peace Love Cats Gifts on Instagram. And they have Peace Love Cats on Facebook. Uh, of course, it's all from Mishi60, I think. <laughs> Very cute. And look at that. It is a cool little collection of cat toys. Uh, we got this uh, this mouse wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Wow. And a, that is very cute. Uh, some classic stuff. We got this little nipper, organic catnip. Uh, it looks like a, like a piece of candy. Uh, this thing, I never know what to call them, but the cats love these. Uh, tiki cat sticks to try and test out. We have Surfer's Delight, Surf's Up, Temptations Mix-Ups. We have two tiny packs of the good stuff, Yao Catnip Mini. And then uh, just a handful of everything else. Oh, even a little tiny uh, cloth wand. Oh, these are good. That'll be fun for somebody. Uh, that's that's so cute for Cahoots. These are all for Cahoots and their tiny little uh, co-conspirators. That's so sweet. Well, for now, let's pack it up and then put it in the box that is the endowments box. Whether it gets distributed before then or not, uh, we will see. Because right now the room's a little crowded, but then I'm going to go down there and be digging through stuff when I decorate the room downstairs. For them. So we'll see what gets pulled out and what doesn't. All right. One more box today, and then, like I said, we'll, we'll pick up the rest tomorrow. But we got this here. And uh, on the outside, there's no hints of anything. It just says Kitten Academy. So, oh, well, I think we recognize who and what this is, though, because it's full of ball towers. So there's only one, uh, one, I say, person that would, excuse me, send this, um, by which I mean two. Uh, it says, Cahoots Tinies, we hope you enjoy some of our favorite toys. Love, Tahini and Flair. Of course. Well, uh, that's what we have in here. There may be more, of course, coming tomorrow, but we've got four of those right here, which is a good number for these kiddos. The Tower of Tracks, which is a, uh, a favorite of everybody for quite a while. They have a big one over there to play with in the meantime, which uh, they've been very interested in when you spin it. They haven't quite figured it out yet, but I've seen them playing with it and climbing on it uh, on their own as well. So I know, I know these kids are going to be uh, one of the groups that's really into it. Um, so thank you very much uh, to everyone for everything. Uh, it's, it's wonderful. I just appreciate so much everybody uh, with their focus on the kittens uh, and the, the, everything that these kittens could possibly need to be set up for a wonderful life. Uh, I just I can't tell you how much I appreciate that help um, in, in making sure that they go off to their adopter with everything they could need. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't really look at it from this angle or, or mention this too often, but uh, you know, it's nice for me, too, and not just from the perspective of being able to, um, you know, send the kittens off with so much love, but also knowing that when they go to their homes, uh, they're going to have so much fun, uh, you know, from, from all of you. It makes, it makes it easier for me, I think, to see them go knowing that uh, they're going to have everything they could possibly want, um, no matter how their doctor sets them up. Uh, they're already set up with everything they could possibly want. And that, that helps a lot. The, the hardest, the hardest part of fostering, you know, I spent the last three days literally covered in diarrhea, uh, from cahoots. Uh, and, uh, still the hardest part of adopting is not that the, uh, the hardest part of uh, fostering, I mean, is, uh, is, is seeing them go at the end, really. Um, so everything that, that you've done and everything the adopters do by, by keeping us up to date on discord, um, that's that's what what really makes this uh, easier, you know, much much easier on me. Uh, so uh, thank you for that. That's, uh, thanks, thanks. I guess is what I'm saying. I really appreciate it. Uh, before I get too maudlin, I am going to uh, do the usual stuff. These kids are starting to fall asleep, which is perfect. Uh, I'm going to take all the stuff out of here, get it cleaned up, and the archive. And then uh, see about what I can do for the rest of the day. I've got a big backlog of work to get done. But uh, with DJ home and hanging out today, I almost feel like maybe I could spend a little bit of that time with her. We don't get to see as much of each other as we used to. Um, it's funny, the cycle that she's been through has been uh, repeating this cycle of, uh, you know, when she first started med school 
um, the first couple of years were just, she was so hitting the books that I hardly got to see her at all. Um, and applying for med school too, when she had to do all the travel to apply and, and do the different applications. You know, we went through this period of where I hardly got to see her. And then by the end of med school, you know, she was just around most of the time uh, and able to hang out. And that was real nice. And then she started her residency. And again, the first year or two of the residency, you just, she was hardly even here. Of course, COVID contributed to that too in the second year of residency when she didn't even come home a lot of times. Um, but it, that's the way residency is anyway, where she just, they book them for just every hour of the day. Uh, but then by the end, again, of her residency, she got to spend a lot of time here hanging out. And that was nice. And then she got into a fellowship and it's the same thing over again, where this is the first year of her fellowship and they work them hard where, uh, the, the nice thing is that she gets to come home sometimes when she's on call, but then there's other nights like, uh, was it the night before last when she thought she'd be able to come home and she didn't even get to go to sleep until like eight in the morning the next day uh, and not at home either. <laughs> she had to sleep there. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, that's the way it is right now. And so I, I like to take advantage of uh, when I can. Of course, it's also worth mentioning she's got a big vacation coming up in a, a week or two where she's going to be home uh, constantly. And that I think it's going to really help. Uh, she'll be able to help take care of some things around here and maybe help us get caught up. Uh, but at the very least, we'll be able to see more of each other. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, new mom cat, maybe she'll be here when the kid, new mom cat delivers. If we get a new mom cat in time, I don't know. That's all still up in the air, too. So uh, so that's it. That was my long-winded way of saying uh, I know I've got a ton of backlog of work to get done. Some of it very important stuff. Uh, but I hope everybody uh, understands if I ask for a bit of a pass today. Uh, we'll see. I don't know why I'm closing this box up so much. This is the one of stuff for us. This is how to get sorted out. That's fine. Let me take this stuff out. She does want me, it's when I go out in the hallway that she starts meowing at the door. Uh, so let's see, Kahootlets. This box, oh, I'm going to pick the box that's a little bit too small for all this. Let's just see though, we reorganize. As long as it all sits in there, we don't have to close the box. We can just carry it downstairs like this. Plus, plus. All right. Well, now, one, two, three, four kittens there. Where's kitten number five? In the cow? No. No, not in the cow. Buried in that, uh, in this bed somewhere, maybe inside? Is there a kitten in here? No. Hmm. Well, as long as they didn't sneak out or pull a count of Monte Cristo hiding in one of these things that's going out to the garbage, I guess we'll be fine. Uh, all right, let me you can fall right off of there. Let me uh, take this out, and then I'll come back. We'll find the last kitten. Make sure that there's nothing out of place. Get all this stuff back where it belongs so you kids can play with it properly. Okay. I think it's so humid out, it's supposed to be sunny and hot today. We might have to get the air, air conditioning turned on today because this room's really hard to cool otherwise without the air, even if the old does it doesn't. Of course, now their mom's out, we got some new options. We can open the door and put the fence up. Ah, these kids are so small, they might go right through the fence. Still, that might be a fun way to keep things cool and start to introduce the packets here there. I don't know, something to consider. I'm probably not going to do that today, but it's a thought. Certainly is that a thought.
still counting the four kittens, though. Come on. Somebody must be behind or but the infinity scratcher things. Yeah, someone completely under the infinity scratcher. Okay. Can't completely sleep. Why don't I do a little close up, which again is going to end the recording. So uh, let's just do this though, and you can see her under there. Him or whichever one it is. So I think it's him. I think it's the boy. No, it's not. It's uh. No, maybe it is. I don't know. All right, here we go. Hang on. So peaceful. Well, that's it for mailbag then. Uh, as soon as I turn off this camera, uh, that's going to end the archive, whether I like it or not. So thanks for joining us, and uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. But until then, and always, you can watch the Kitten Academy live stream right here on YouTube as much as you like. These guys look like they're ready for a big old nap. I can't tell if you're trying to play with that gnome or that feather. There you go. That's the, just the right size for you for a kid toy right now, isn't it? Kind of. All right. Thanks, everybody.